I swear, this whole getup is gonna make sense as you watch the video. But before we get into this broadcast presentation, there are some points in this video where it becomes very choppy, things didn't go as planned, and I'm just here as glue to make the puzzle complete. Let's get into this. Got a pimple like here, right there, glorious. Yeah, I love movies and television, but I'm not some robotic reviewer. I love to talk about anything that sparks passion in me. It was 2 a.m. last night when I had this burst of energy to finally take initiative to work on this idea, so I busted out my laptop and started writing. So, as you all know, because everybody knows everything, Taylor Swift's Eras Tour has been selling out like crazy. You can't get tickets, and there's a few shows left, and you can't get tickets for those either, obviously. Much like Olivia Rodrigo's tour, which I've been brutally disrespected by, but that's a separate conversation. However, well, baby. <laughs> on August 31st, which I assume is the proper date, the Eras Tour concert movie is announced. And as you can see on screen, I <laughs> immediately start plotting. I do like Taylor Swift, although my Spotify saved songs are doing me no justice. Nothing new was a recommendation from a friend. And what's that one song called? I can see it was played by Spotify's DJ and I saved it on the spot right then and there. But I do like Blank Space. I knew you were trouble. I mean, obviously, the classics. But aside from my lack of rabbit holing through her music, even on day one, the good seats were taken. And on day two, we get the announcement that the pre-sales for the first 24 hours are in second place behind Endgame. Absolutely insane. So it's still the, the start of September and a few days go by and I come across this Philip DeFranco short. The Swifties must be stopped. That's something a number of people are yelling right now because of this whole Eras Tour concert film. The people attending are also planning on being loud, essentially acting as if this is the actual concert. With tons of people not only saying that they plan on screaming, but they also expect others to do the same. But on the other side of this, you have a lot of people just wishing she left that part out, arguing that by giving her fans that inch, it's clear they plan on taking a mile. With some concern, things that get so rowdy and so loud is gonna turn this thing into a negative experience. Now, whether or not it gets disruptive, I think this is going to be an experience that I just cannot let slip by. This is an amazing phenomenon and I want to be a part of it. The energy is going to be awesome. I then post this on my story on September 10th. I originally planned for a 31 day video, then a 21 day video, then 14, then 10, and here we are with 7. And a day after, on 9-11, I buy my expensive ass ticket to watch the Eras Tour concert in Dolby Cinemas a week from today at 9.30 p.m in a good ass row that was one single seat left. I mean, a single seat in a good row, in a good spot for an event that's almost pretty much sold out. I had to die for that opportunity. So yeah, that's how we're here. That's why I'm creating this. So there are a few things we need to do in the next seven days starting today. And to start that off is finding out what the hell swungs are gonna be playing. And thankfully, we have the internet. I've checked over two articles and I compared the songs that they're predicting are going to be on the Eras Tour concert movie. And here they are as follows. I'm here from the further future to save you three minutes of your time by showing you that these are the songs that made the cut. I was yapping too much. The video was boring. So I made this beautiful color coded table. All right, let's jump back into the past. This freaking playlist came out to 51 songs, three hours and 18 minutes. I will probably listen to this playlist twice today because I'm that committed. We're not clout, we're not clout chasing this Eras tour. We're committed to the freaking long haul. We are becoming, oh, my ankle hurts so much. What the fuck? We are committed to becoming fans of Taylor Swift and we will belong in that seat in the theater. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. See you tomorrow or later. So it's still day one and I just got back home and I did listen to all those songs, every freaking song. Check it out. We got six hours ago all the way up to one hour ago. It was more pleasant than I thought it'd be. I saw 51 songs and I thought to myself, oh God, this is not going to be fun. This is not going to be a good time. But anyway, of those 51, only 21 made the cut. So I created playlist one with 50 tracks, listened to it, and then created playlist two with my favorites. Then my next goal was to re-listen to the 50 tracks and make sure that the second playlist was well refined and that I wasn't missing a hidden gem or had to take something out. I cut it down from three hours and 18 minutes to one hour, 16 minutes. Oh my God. Now I'm going to try and edit some of what I recorded today into a cohesive video. And I have to wake up at 6 a.m. Mind you, it's 9.44, so 
Yeah, that's a wrap. I did not edit that night. I washed my face and I laid in bed for that 6 a.m. wake up. Day one was pretty much the most cohesive day recorded up until maybe the final day. I was upbeat, hopeful, energetic, a peak of the timeline. Let's see what happens on day two. I've got to drive two hours. It's, it's like 6.15 or something right now. And I slept at two, dude. <laughs> ah, yes. It reminds me of waking up super early to go to school. It's 7.19, about 13 hours later. Things didn't pan out as I thought they were going to. I thought I'd be able to plug in my headphones, listen to some music after my two hour drive. But alas, that didn't happen. Now, if you excuse me, I've got some shopping to do. So we just lost about a minute of footage. It turns out we lost 15 minutes of footage. That whole segment there just does not want to load on my laptop. But I do have the screen recording with some chopped up audio. So let's review that. So here, I'm just browsing the shop. I had seen it before, but apparently I remember saying I forgot what was on here. So I've gone ahead and I tabbed up all the shirts and we're just gonna go through them real quick, see what the differences are. I had mostly settled on the album t-shirts because I thought they were just really clean and I liked the photos. And I settled on shirts rather than hoodies because you can wear a shirt year round, whereas a hoodie, you can't. Why am I struggling to pick a shirt? Why is this a big deal? It's not even a big deal. I need to pick a shirt that I'm gonna wear the hell out of because this is gonna cost. And we're getting some premium shipping. Here we finally see the process of elimination. This first red one gets claimed. And I started consulting which albums, I started trying to remember which tracks I had saved. The Reputation one really wasn't my favorite, and you can see me look it up right here. I'm like, damn, okay, the Reputation shirt's kind of nice, but I didn't like the album that much. And finally, I just settled down between... White on white, and it just blends in. Betty, I believe you're on the Folklore album. It's low-key, it's the most low-key of them all. And I love the photos, I said that at the start. I picked the Folklore shirt because it wasn't flashy. Betty is on the album, and I just like the photos on there. That's 15 minutes condensed to about a minute and 40. Let's continue. And the only thing that we lost from there truly was the fact that they tried to sell me 1989 for an additional 1289 when damn, damn well, well, that, that 13, 13 bucks, bucks is going, going to, to faster, faster shit, baby. Uh, continue to check out. Wait, three day select. What is... <laughs> three day select was, um. 15 or 13 dollars the other day and now it's 31. What is grounded? What is standard? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We need to stop this. Hold up. <sighs> what the fuck? Where's the merch at, man? Do they not know who this is? I assume Taylor has all the rise to merchandising. That's $76 for a shirt. For a shirt. For a shirt. After some time thinking and sitting here, if you want to show up to any event, any situation, and you want to present the best possible version of yourself, you got to be committed. And what am I doing? I'm committed to this, man. Let's go! Don't tell anybody. I'm not telling anybody about this. I'm not telling my friends, not telling my, my mom. I'm not telling my mom. Whoever sees this, only you know. <laughs> I'm gonna go now. My job is done here. Unfortunately, we're recording this on part of day four, which day three was a freaking sham. It was a flop. Nothing really happened, which you'll see in the very short next part of this video. But we're here to talk about what songs I finally concluded for the second playlist of this movie. <laughs> and now let us watch as Thanos snaps away the songs that did not make the cut for the second playlist. I was blabbering too much. It wasn't entertaining. It was a waste of time. And now I'm a, this is it, I'm gone. No more further future self. And I got a second run of the consulator. Enjoy the rest of this. Now nah, that's out the way. Um, so with the removal of what I think is 24 songs, the playlist is now one hour and 36 minutes shorter.
which is a good thing because if I want to listen to these songs multiple times and just get to know them, be familiar with them, a shorter playlist loop is a better alternative to that. Is a better is a better alternative than to loop three hours and 20 minutes. Oh my God, unscripted, man. What do you talk about when you don't have a script? I'm boring. So that was a mouthful. I woke up at 6 a.m., drove hella hours, bought the merch, and shoved in the fact that I condensed the playlist. And that part was used, or that part was recorded using footage from day four. And so does day three. Check this out. Now, yesterday on day three, which is Sunday, I again had to drive two hours up north, stay with some family for a bit, <laughs> then I had to drive another two and a half hours back home here. And I got home like at 11.50, midnight. This weekend threw me off, man. I feel like, felt like quitting, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, dude, just scrap this video, it's a flop. But we're gonna continue on to day four. On the night of day one, I declared I was going to listen to the original playlist a second time, but I ended up splitting that up between day three and day four. I spent the weekend driving with no personal time and things started to derail, which is why I'm providing present day commentary. So today, day four, is we're gonna do some cardio. This is an excuse to get some workout in, some fitness in, because you got to elevate. You've gotta elevate yourself in more than one way. See, so yeah, I'm about to just go out and jog. I haven't done so in so long. I do like to walk. I'll put up a screenshot somewhere on the screen of previous times that I've gone. I always do four miles because there's a park about that length near me. But today, we're gonna get that heart rate pumping. And each time that I introduce something for this video, such as the jogging, there's some other things you'll see coming up ahead. That is something I'm going to be implementing every day. So I specifically left this part in during editing just to say that it never happened. I jogged the one day and it fucking killed me. Ah! Um, yes, let's go. It's also cold. It's like 50 something. But we're not, we're not quitting. quitting. I'm gonna say it right now, I'm not the most fit person in the world and I just wanna get four miles in under an hour. If, it, if, it's, 50, if it's 50, 59 minutes, it's holy shit. That's gonna be a win for me. I'll be walking for part of it. I'm not gonna continuously jog that whole thing because I'm gonna have a heart attack. Okay, day one jogging, Um, yeah, let's go. I just hit a mile and a third and I'm dying, but it's day one and I'm not used to this, but we're not quitting, even though I want to, ah, kill me. I just hit about two miles, I'm getting used to it. Um, the only thing bothering me is my sneakers. The laces are getting undone, undone very fast and I keep retying them. Ah, two more, two more, two more. I just hit 30.07 miles before I took out the camera. <sighs> Last mile, but I'm losing steam. My third lap was my fastest, but I don't think I can, uh, I can beat that. Uh, I'll record in the car because my phone's on like 10%. Mm. There's half a mile left. Kill me. My goal is 54 minutes. Right now it's about hit 51 minutes at 0.3 or 3.75. So I got two minutes to hit a quarter mile. I got this right, I got this right. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Talk to you at the house. So I just showered, I got back obviously. <laughs> and I finished at around 53 minutes and 30 seconds, which places my four mile record about 20 minutes faster than usual. I usually finish at one hour and 14 minutes. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty tired, I'm pretty beat. I'm surprised at that I actually kept it up because, I, dude, halfway through that first mile, I was fucked. And I think I'm just going to just chill for a bit. I think I'm just gonna edit for the rest of the day. Um, yeah, what, today's day four? So I'm gonna go eat, relax for a bit, chop this shit up, and continue listening to the playlist. 
We'll see you tomorrow for a less taxing day. See you tomorrow. I hung about, watched some more A2K, and passed out. My mood dropped immensely as the day went on. Today, we are gonna go on YouTube, and we're gonna type in vocal lesson. You know, as a child, as a little boy, when I was in third grade and fourth grade, I used to be in chorus. We put on some performances, my mom came, it was a grand time. But as I've aged, my voice is pretty garbage. There's not much singing room. I... <laughs> I'm ass! So what better way than to spice up this weekly Swifty training, training camp, camp than with seeing how to sing. Ugh. That disc is looking thick. Should we be basic and hit the first video? Where are my glasses, man? Okay. Get a load of this part right here. It's a whole mess. My attention span goes out the window and some of the audio for the video is not even in sync, so it kind of looks bad, but enjoy my zoo exhibit. Lessons as a challenge. A challenge for me to prove to you that with the right technique... If you don't believe that you can be a better singer, if you have a closed mind results. I'm the best singer, damn it! Next, stand up straight and keep your chest just slightly elevated. We don't want to, that brings us to breathing for singing. The proper breath can make, allows the stomach to expand or extend. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry, he had a, his belly was popping out, I went too. But damn, that was funny, that was random. Manipulating or tensing up something in our singing. So as a singer, if you're just getting. Ah. <laughs> Singing tendency is. Now, many beginning singers will sing too lightly. Uh... One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, let's just let's see what other teachers have in store for us. Okay, voice lessons for be sitting thinking about what discipline of doing vocal exercises. Uh, it's the so same four, shit. Let's go back to that breathing thing. <laughs> so chest, stomach. I'm a little confused. I've always seen this like on the on the A2K show. They talked about breathing through your stomach, and my cousins mentioned it as well. And I never fully grasped it, but I think I kind of see where that's coming into play. We're gonna do one more video for today, and I found one called "How to Sing Better Instantly for Guys." Right. So find where your note is as you slide down. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds like a lawnmower. Hmm. <laughs> that note, I want you to just drop your jaw. Let your mouth open. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Uh, <laughs> video helpful. To Let's move over there. So that was about 27 minutes condensed into lesson three. Well, I don't know what I expected, but that sure was something. So I learned to <laughs> breathing with the gut and that, hmm, that resting, that, that's, I think that's my favorite takeaway of the day behind the, the breathing exercise. Never thought about that resting voice. All right, today's Tuesday, October 10th. There are three days left until the concert. I'm excited for Friday. Got something big for Friday besides the concert. See ya. That was such a fun blast. Unlike the energy coming next. We're just making this day very short. It was so unproductive. I haven't been feeling good at all, pretty much at any point in today's day. And it was supposed to be a day of memorizing lyrics, but Ugh, that can wait for another time. But I was never memorizing anything with that energy. And one last thing is that I ordered my merch shirt on Saturday night. I paid for three day shipping. And just today, I got an email that my order has been processed. So I'm thinking, okay, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's three days, right? A few hours ago, I checked the email again and it's apparently arriving by Friday. So if I do get the shirt by Friday, I'm gonna wear it. 
I'm not refunding it. We're going through with it. But let's say if it arrives Saturday, I'm going to refund it because $30 for shipping is insane. That's all I'm going to say. Calm voice. Shit day. I feel nauseous. Um, oh, yeah. And Cinemark just announced they have, they're doing shows tomorrow and they're doing extra shows on Friday. Bastards. But I'm completely happy with the time I'm going and when I'm going and where I'm going. Okay, see ya. Overall, bad day. Don't even think I listen to Taylor that much. And I wanted to genuinely quit about 4 million times throughout this whole process. And if you thought day 6 was booty... Nothing special happened today. I listened to the playlist. I heard Taylor. That was it. Tomorrow's the big day though, baby! Absolutely nothing. Recorded that at the end of the day. The concert day though brought some good news and some good energy. No! The reason I'm saying no is because I had ordered my Taylor Swift merch on Saturday and I didn't get a confirmation email till Wednesday that it was shipping. Today is October 13th, Friday the 13th. Hold on, let me see something. I don't see it. I just got an email saying your order has been delivered. Ah! I cut some gibberish out, but I was slightly disappointed because my mind was set on that $76 refund. But enough goofs aside, this week has sucked ass. I had a horrible start to my morning, and now I'm talking to the camera, and I guess it's all right because we put on a front. No, it's just like a light switch, like, be energetic! Be crazy. Today is an important day. We tried training, we've done some singing, we've done some song memorization, and we've done some cardio, but there's one thing missing, and you know what that is? I am ugly. So I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna break a, I'm gonna break a, a year long drought. I am actually going to get a haircut today. It's been four years and one month. September 2019, right before the pandemic, is the last time I went to a barber shop and I got a haircut by a professional. Why am I so slimy? It's like 12.50. My appointment's at 2 o'clock. I, I have, guys, I have an appointment on a website. Shit. This video has flopped, man. Can I wait for it to be over? But I can't wait even harder for tonight. My whole demeanor is going to be different. It's going to be so great. All right, let's shut this shit off. Apparently, I got to wait another 10 minutes because they're on lunch. But I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. It's been four years. My haircut barbershop terminology is ass. And I don't know. Socializing? <laughs> it was chill as soon as I stepped in. It's always the anticipation of the situation that gets me. It's 8.22. We had another downhill in the day. But it's one hour till showtime. We're about to clean these sneakers. And I've worn them maybe, let's say, a handful of times. Let's say five, right? And on this one, the right sneaker has this dirt on it. We're going to put some nice music over this. We're going to fast forward the cleaning process. Maybe I'm going to chime in a bit. Yeah. Funny story about this BS is I got conned at the mall. It was one of those salesmen that come up to you. And I was like, damn, this person's doing a good job. Let me just... Let me just ball out on that real quick. I feel bad. I got con, I got hustled. But guess what? I'm using them for a fucking video. Let me wet this real quick. Well, I think that did nothing, but what do we expect? Quick touch whites. This is some bootleg ass shit, man. Let me go wet these. <sighs> okay, back in the scam box you go. Getting my money's worth, damn it. It's 8.53 and we gotta open this up. $70 by the way. There's purple hearts. <sighs> That'll be a little a useful prop later. This is so crooked, how is this straight? Dude, this tripod has scoliosis. I wonder if this is a long shirt. This is a medium. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. There's the length. Dude, look at the folds on this. This is rash. Does it not say folklore? Is this even folklore? It is, it is. Let's put this on. Ooh, this is a nice fabric. I have no idea how I look. I might need to tuck this. Next up, we're gonna switch from these shorts to these jeans. These aren't drying fast enough. 
See the white marks? Fucking wet boho. Whatever happens, happens. And if these shoes get messed up, they're on camera and they're memorialized. Nothing happened, man. Oh my God, it's coming off. Come off, man. Look at these boys. I'm gonna try tucking this thing. Belt, secured, sneakers, next. Parking lot's packed, dude. I just took a, a spot at the last second. Someone was turning in and I just slid in like, damn. All right, I'm about to go in. It's gonna be packed. I'll put up uh, the seating chart that I screenshot a few minutes ago. The caffeine is making me have a heart attack. I'm a little tired in the eyes, but my, my chest, my body, Yo, there's so many fucking people here. I've, I haven't seen a theater this packed in so long. Um, everyone's dressed up and shit. <laughs> As I was heading towards my seat, I noticed there was an old lady sitting solo. But eventually, I heard her on the phone say, I'm already in. And as the ads played, I heard the music blasting from the IMAX room next to us. And when this came up, this girl in the row in front of me on my right said, Oh my God, I'm so excited. And the entire time, I was waiting for my seat partners to show up. I wanted a chit chat, damn it. And then the elderly ladies people showed up and it turns out it was a couple and maybe like their older 30s. And then the younger people in the family had shown up. Man, if you think I'm blabbering, I'm just trying to capture the energy of my part pumping in extreme anguish and anticipation. And then the Mean Girls trailer played and everyone was excited. And the Bob Marley trailer came on and almost had a heart attack. Oh my God, I miss cinema. And then the people on my right had shown up and they just seemed like a regular normal couple. Ugh. And that was right, the guy showed no emotion and the girl had a little energy going on. The three girls on my left showed up like eight minutes after it started and I was blessed enough for them to be energetic and I had a few interactions with the one next to me. Now I just wanna showcase some of this awesome Friday night here. And the build up to Betty was so great that this was one of the few things I recorded out of excitement and not for the video. Got this little poster here that they didn't give me at the start, but I'm glad I grabbed it at the end so I didn't have to hold on to it the whole time. This is going right on the set. <laughs> that was everything I wanted it to be and more. The performances, the, the set design, the, st oh, the stages, the, her dresses. Oh my God, it was just so good. I needed this and it's exactly what I wanted. This is gonna be the last unscripted part of the video. I'm gonna compile my thoughts into a nice format because I think I'm a good writer. Anything else I want to say? I'm just so happy and I'm full of life and I needed this. I just, I think that's a perfect capstone statement for this. I just really, really needed this and it delivered and I'm so happy. Uh, see you in the scripted side of the world. I just have to reiterate once more how spectacular it was to be in this room. It was actually like being at the concert because throughout the two and a half hours, people were singing their asses off. There were multiple groups of girls having the time of their existence. And I'll say, I'm pretty impressed that those whatever year olds had memorized so many lyrics. One group behind me had a girl that would sing from her throat. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. It was fun all around to see the enthusiasm of the younger crowd, but aside from that, there were a couple of hits where a lot of people were standing, and especially through the 1989 songs. Wow.
Wow, wow, wow. But even I knew that album was a smash hit and the audience reaction delivered. We got Blank Space and Shake It Off back to back, which was a freaking highlight right next to 22, Never Getting Back Together and Knew You Were Trouble. The duo followed by a gap and then Bad Blood was, might I say, legendary. People stayed up for all four 1989 songs. That clump and the red trio were the songs I knew the most from the past, so I enjoyed myself so much. And aside from the audience, man, the whole production was just awesome. The cinematography was so, so sexy. The scene, set, stage production, whatever you want to call it, the edits made were the camera movements and Taylor Swift's outfits for each era was hit after hit. All her outfits were so amazing, especially her 10 minutes all too well performance. It's my favorite. My favorite. I've always had a little small crush on Taylor Swift, but damn, I never realized her true beauty until this movie. And her nails were so nice too. They were multicolored and just stuck out to me the whole performance. She's a great showman. I was bopping my head for the whole two and a half hours. My freaking neck was hurting by the end of it. Even songs I didn't transfer over to the second playlist, starting with the opening of Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince were enjoyable. Just something about the live performance that just improves everything. I genuinely teared up from both eyes, either during this song or the next one. I was just so overfilled with emotion and joy. I wanted this to happen. I told myself going in, I hope I tear up. I do want to say that this past week genuinely was horrible for me. I rarely have low self-esteem, but I was just not feeling good about myself, amongst other things. Here's a few snippets of a conversation from my brother. Literally the day of the concert. I told you at the start of the video that I neglected this idea from 31 days down to seven. And even then, I feel like I failed in what I wanted to do. I didn't even care about the concert all month. And I feel like at some point I forgot I had gotten the ticket up until the Wednesday prior. That's when I finally looked forward to it. And even on the morning of, I didn't want to go anymore. I felt hopeless. But truthfully, this was great. I recognized almost every song. My memorization of lyrics is so, so poor, but I was in a constant state of, ah, oh, is this song? Oh, snap, it's, it's this one. Listening to the original playlist of over three hours twice, and then just spamming the other ones that I created so much, I cannot stress enough how much of a personal connection I've built with these songs. Sure, I didn't fully memorize a song or jog four miles a day, but this was a success as I was a stranger to no song performed and I felt like I belonged. Which is funny because I noticed as I was editing, that was one of my initial mission statements to feel like I belonged. We are committed to becoming fans of Taylor Swift and we will belong in that seats in the theater. <laughs> Completely forgot I said that. This was a task I took upon myself to commit to by myself. I didn't talk to anyone about it. I wanted the week to be over at about the third or fourth day in. I had lost the will to create. I was unhappy. I even wanted to scrap the video idea with even those four days of footage built up. I've been to conscious before and I also have been in an excited movie crowd. So I held on to the hope that October, Friday the 13th, 9.30 p.m. was going to be something worth it. Something full of energy that I, I haven't experienced in a long time. I can't believe this, but I listen to the songs that I have saved and they bring me happiness. I envision Taylor singing up on that stage. They are no longer some famous person singing in a studio playing on my phone. This week, this concert, this video, this work, this effort is all tied to these songs and they make me happy. And I would cherish that for the time being. I did not expect to have this reaction, but it's incredible how life can work out. I'm truly happy about it though, and I wouldn't have it any other way. As you can probably tell, I am a passionate person, and this might sound dumb, but trying to become a Taylor Swift fan amongst horrible times off camera led to the wonderful payoff of experiencing a concert full of great people, great music, and great times, and a memory that I'll never forget, so much so that this is going to be a part of my background no matter how I evolve or switch things up in the future. Taylor Swift, I'm a proud fan of yours. You're phenomenal, you're a star of our generation. I initially set out to become part of something for the culture and the excitement, and I came out touched, endeared, and full of hope. Thank you. Your music has left an imprint on me as it has to many others. And thank you for watching. I went to the concert by myself, and now I'm geeking and talking about it to myself. So if you clicked and made it this far, I appreciate you. Who else would listen to me if it weren't for strangers on the internet? <laughs> Woo! <laughs>
You know, I did think I was telling the truth when I said you wouldn't see me again from the further future, but I just got back from my second showing, and those people were so fucking dead. There was like a little pit in the back of people being hyped. Like, literally, they were just fucking standing there. Dude, if you want to be excited, if you want to enjoy something, go opening weekend or go, go super early in terms of release because going after the first weekend or something is just ass. It does not compare. And now I'm done.